Where are you? Whoa! 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 Look how beautiful these guys are. How cool is that? Little eyelash bike. Right? Indonesian kinko. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Whoa! What is going on, my beautiful, wonderful snake enthusiasts out there? I got a little uh, defrosted dead gray rat snake here to feed to the baby king cobra. Because if you guys have watched the previous episodes, you've seen that we've got this new baby Indonesian-Malaysian king cobra hybrid that my buddy Andrew Gahuli donated. Uh, this snake does not eat on its own, so we have to assist feed it. And this will probably be like the fourth or fifth feeding that we've done for him. He's just a little guy. He's hanging out right in here. Little... King Cobra, super defensive, just a cute little guy, but still at this size, he could definitely put you in a coffin. They do have residual amounts of venom that will whoo, potentially kill you, especially if you get bit in the belly like that. But he's just a little guy, beautiful little baby King Cobra, super defensive like they typically are at this size. And we just want to gently, whoo, we just want to gently pin him behind the neck. There we go. Nice and smooth, making it look easy, but it is not that simple. It's really meticulous and you gotta be super careful you don't get bit in the thumb or the finger put his coils underneath my armpit to make it a little bit easier to keep him from wrapping him on the sill we're gonna take this gray rat snake and direct it right into the mouth of this young king cobra going right past the extended trachea where they breathe out of when they're eating and make sure he can still breathe and we get it right past where it needs to go so he grabbed onto it on his own and we're gonna assist right into the throat and it's not my favorite thing to do when it comes to force feeding it's really really tough on the animal and you don't want to stress them out and kill them but you got to do what you can so they don't pass away this will keep them nice and full of nutrients to get this rat snake down the good thing is he doesn't regurgitate so as long as you get the rat snake in a good portion he'll eat the rest on his own we're just going to leave him like that with the snake just sticking out a little bit let him work the rest of it down would you have a look at that the little indonesian hybrid is chowing down on the rat snake all on his own great news he's already shed once while being here and now, after having another big meal like this, he's gonna grow like crazy. In the wild, these guys will be eating every couple days, so they're pretty frequent eaters. They have a fast metabolism, eating like flying snakes and random little snakes in the brush. Look at him, little Derpasaurus Rex. Little baby King Cobra, comment below, what should we name him? It seems like he's doing okay. So maybe we can start working on getting him a name. I just don't like naming animals that potentially could pass away. When you first get a baby King Cobra like that, there's a good chance that it might perish from not doing well with the stress of force feeding or maybe doesn't hold down the food. So we'll be keeping that guy for a long time, raising him up for display. And now we're gonna be dealing with Stevie, the inland taipan. You can see he's hanging out right here. Most venomous snake in the world or most venomous land snake in the world. It looks like he's a little dark. He might be going into the shedding process. And this guy is getting big. Look how thick he's gotten. Finally getting some size to him. It's not fun to work with something like a taipan when it's a little tiny noodle, and it's all wiry all over the place. When they're this size and bigger, it's much easier. And you can see he's getting thick. Look at him. Might not look like much, but this is the most venomous snake in the world, inland Taipan from Australia. I'm gonna put him right in here. Ooh, watch out, buddy. I'm gonna close this up and clean up his enclosure. He's gone to the bathroom all over the place. He's got a fast metabolism like a little king. And just gotta make sure he has a nice clean environment. So I'm gonna pick up this spicy meatball. Yeah. Ah, okay, let's do this. Very nice. Oh, very nice full of spice. Woo, all right. So we got a nice clean enclosure for a little Stevie. Inland Taipan from Australia. Gonna get him right out of there, nice and neat. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful orange underbelly with spotting. Let's see. Just gonna hook him and put him right inside the enclosure. Don't wanna mess with him too much. I'm gonna get this glass right where it belongs. Make sure it's nice and secure. There we go. Put a lock on that baby. There we go. And now let's go see how the eyelash vipers are doing. The parents of all those babies that we got not too long ago. What's up, mama? Woo hoo, trying to bite the glass. This is my big female eyelash viper. She's the one who produced all those little babies months back. Just gonna bring her out so I can do a little spot cleaning in her enclosure. Take out her boyfriend as well. Look how big this eyelash viper's getting. That is incredible. We'll put her right here on the edge of the can so you guys can get a good look at her. And we got the boyfriend right here. 
for the little husband. Little husband, how you doing? Beautiful red and green eyelash viper. You gotta love eyelash vipers. These guys are the most iconic reptiles next to king cobras and gaboon vipers. Look at that, beautiful yellows and reds. They're what's called polymorphic, so they come in an endless array of coloration. And even though the parents is, you got like a red and green one with a yellow one, their babies can be a plethora of different colors. Endless color combinations. How cool is that? Little eyelash vipers. I'm gonna put these guys right in here. Just do a little spot cleaning real quick. Pull out some poop. Even though it's a bioactive, sometimes they poop in areas that I can't get cleaned up with isopods. All right, we got the poop scraped off of the wood. We can put these eyelash vipers back where they belong. Look at that. How cool is that? I definitely need to get more eyelash vipers in the future. Maybe some oranges, some pinks, maybe some reds. Let's get these guys right back where they belong. And hopefully we can get some more babies from them in the future. Beautiful vipers. Ooh, sorry. So sorry, so sorry. So nice. Yeah, we should make. All right, now we got the albino monocled cobra. He needs to get cleaned up. He's got shed skin and poop all over the place. All right, let's flip the hide over just like that. Just want to be nice and gentle because he ate not too long ago. Relax, dude. This guy is drop for drop more potent than a king cobra, being a true cobra. These guys are found from Northern India all throughout Asia. Ooh, relax, dude. Beautiful albino monocled cobra. Look at that. Sexy looking snake. He's just a cranky male that my buddy gave me a couple years back. I'll stick him right in there. Relax, dude. This enclosure nice and cleaned up. So he has a nice place to go to. We got a nice clean enclosure. Let's get this beautiful albino monocled cobra back. Oi! Oi, sunshine. Gorgeous looking boy. Get him right back where he belongs. There we go. Nice and easy. We'll get this closed up. Put a lock on it, make sure it's nice and secure. And now we're gonna move on to Justina, the female Indonesian king cobra. So the first king cobra you saw, that's basically what this little lady looked like years back. And she has not changed her personality since she was a little baby. She's always been a really cranky king. She ate a ball python not too long ago, so she needs to get cleaned up after going to the bathroom over the place. Wanna make sure she has a nice clean area. Oi, Pepe, it's not about you. Uh, this time I'm gonna put her in the can. Last time I didn't do it, but I wanna make sure I get a nice deep clean going on. Hey, baby. Beautiful King Cobra, look at that. She is a beast. Whoa! Easy, baby. Easy, baby. Relax. Look at that. Woo! Big, beautiful Indonesian King Cobra. Ooh, look at that. Ooh -wee. She's looking for something to bite. She's just looking to bite her own tail for a second, thinking it was me. Whoa! Look at that! <laughs> She's a gnarly king cobra. All right, woo! I'm just gonna put her into the can. I'm not trying to play too many games with her today. There we go. Nice and easy. Uh oh, she got my hand wrapped up. Nice and easy, baby. She is a tough snake. There we go. No big deal. Super simple. Let me get the trash hole receptacle. We'll clean up all this nasty poop. She's gone all over the place. You just want to make sure she doesn't have a dirty home anymore. Get this glass out. All right, my beautiful people. We got the enclosure nice and clean. We can put this female king cobra back in her enclosure. Nice and easy. Hopefully she's a bit forgiving. I can hear her growling already. Let's see, nice and easy, baby. Look at that, beautiful Indonesian King Cobra. Obviously, you should never handle venomous reptiles like this. I've been doing this stuff my whole life. If you make one wrong move, they can light you up and put you in a coffin. Nice and easy, baby. Oh, let's go ahead and a little spin around to make sure she doesn't look at my hands. She's focusing on the root. Nice and easy. Yep, one more growl, I hear you. There we go. Just gonna coax her right into the enclosure. And you can see she's got these like gnarly scars going down the sides of her body. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's from a previous owner trying to feed her giant live rats. So typically these guys are eating mainly reptiles in the wild. And rats, if they don't get eaten right away by the snake in captivity, sometimes the rat will try to kill the snake. So even though a rat is supposed to be food for a snake, 
Rats are ruthless, and if the snake doesn't eat them right away, the rat will literally eat the snake alive. So what happened with Justina is she literally got chewed by a giant sewer rat, basically. It wasn't really a sewer rat, but it was like a giant rat the size of a small chihuahua. Hello, Pepe. All right, now let's go take care of this beautiful pair of cake covers, the new ones. We're gonna go clean them up, and then go see how this whole pygmy rattlesnake's doing. Here we have the beautiful couple. We have the two new cake cobras from Africa. These are the most toxic cobras in Africa, drop for drop. And these guys are just beautiful. One of my favorite covers in the world. They're not that big right now. They can get around like five plus feet. This is my male. We named him Mustard. And then we have a new female in the enclosure as well. We haven't thought of a name yet. And then we got this beautiful female right here. So they've actually been showing a lot of interest in each other since we put them together. Uh, but we probably just missed the mating season. So eventually we're gonna separate these guys and make sure they get some good weight on them. And then we're gonna try and breed Cape Cobras next year. Look how beautiful these guys are. Comment below what should we name this new female. How beautiful. Golden Cobras, more toxic than Black Mambas in some instances. These are a very well-respected Cobra. You got bit by one of these guys, it's almost a death sentence. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna get this nice and clean, get all these spicy meat balls out to the enclosure and get some fresh water. And I'll see you guys in a second. Ah, magnifico, uh, Calipio, ah, uh, bueno. Uh, see, si, si, uh, we take uh, Cobras aquí and we put them back aquí. So, hello. Hello, Delilah. Do not comment below. We need to name her Delilah because I said it once, okay? <laughs> you guys are crazy about that. So this is the new female. What should we name this beautiful cake cover? Comment below. Ooh, gorgeous looking female. Good size to her. She ate the other day, or ate a couple days ago, so she's already eating food, no problem. Get her right into there. They're not cranky like the monocled covers. They don't show off too much. At least these two individuals don't. But uh, this is not a snake that you want to get comfortable with. If they bit you, it would be really, really bad. Look at that guy. How beautiful is that? Sexy looking Cape Cobra. Old Mustard. That's why I'm naming him, and I don't care what you guys say. His name's Mustard. Come on, Mustard. Back in your enclosure with your beautiful wife. Like I said, later on, we're going to separate these guys. Just for now, we're going to keep them together. Lock on that baby, make sure it's nice and secure. And next, we're gonna look at a snake that we really don't look at much on the channel. This is one of the first snakes that joined the collection next to King Tut, Kevin the King Cobra. This is my pygmy rattlesnake. And as you can see, this snake already went shed. I don't know where the snake is at right now. I hear the faint rattle of the pygmy rattlesnake, but I don't see the rattlesnake. Where are you? Whoa, oh my God, drop scare, he was on the lift. Don't you love vision cages? So he's looking right at me. I gotta be careful about this. I wanna take the glass off like that. Use it as a shield. Make it go there. Let's see. We're just gonna get this opened up. Use the tiny little snake hook. What's up, little dude? Just gonna scoop him out. Beautiful little pygmy rattlesnake. How sick is that? Look at this guy. So as you can see, he's got a tiny little rattle on the tip of that tail. They nicknamed these guys ground rattlers because the only way to really hear them rattles is to get close to the ground next to them. And as if you get real close, you can hear that faint little, like, it's almost like a bee humming. Zzz, you can barely hear it. People get bit on the toes when they're wearing flip-flops on a trail. And sometimes people get bit when they're uh, picking out plants at like Lowe's or Home Depot or something because the nurseries that produce these plants that they sell are out in the sticks where these snakes are found. Sometimes they're in the stalks of the plants and then they get rooted up with the plants, woo, and they get moved uh, to a place where they sell them. And then people check the tag to see what kind of price it is, and then they get tagged as well. Look at that beautiful pygmy rattlesnake. Do not want to play too many games with this little guy. If he bit you, it wouldn't kill you, but it would be pretty miserable. Look at that gorgeous little pygmy. I got him when he was like the size of a dime. Little baby, they start off like that big, so small. Then you shed his skin, so he's growing. He's pooping like crazy. Just making daddy proud. I'm gonna clean this enclosure and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, we got fresh water, a nice clean exhibit for this beautiful little pygmy to go back. Let's hopefully get him hooked easily. Sometimes, ooh, these guys are a little bit difficult to keep on the hook. Their weight is hard to distribute. They're little thick little thangs going all over the place, a little bit squirmy. Nice and easy, buddy. That's why sometimes it's easy just to get like the lid of a can, just like that and then show them the enclosure. Oh no, 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 even, even with that, you still fall, come on. It, I look like a pro for a second. There we go, right like that. Oh, don't bite my thumb. <laughs> come here, buddy, we don't want rotting appendages. There we go. You are so cranky, dude. You're so cranky. 
Just put the glass right there. It uses like a little shield. There we go. And then now we can put a lock on that baby, nice and secure. Perfect. And I put a little wedge of wood just to make sure it's super tight. All right, so we got Kobe the Black Mamba. He's getting big. We gotta clean him up, take him out of his enclosure. Hopefully he goes nice and easy and doesn't make too much of a fuss. As a black mamba, he's known to be one of the most dangerous snakes in the world to handle because they're so athletic, very toxic with their venom, and very defensive being an African snake. Ugh. Come on, nub. There we go. So let's just try to gently hook him out. A little bit of a scoop, bring him over here. There we go. Look at that. You, whoa, 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 relax, dude. Relax, dude. You're, you're all over the place today. There we go. Kobe the Black Mamba. Big, beautiful, male, South African Black Mamba. Definitely a snake that you should use a longer hook with. Oh. What's up, dude? What are you doing? Give me back my hook. Give me back my hook. You took my whole hook. There we go. Perfect. Just like that, stick him right into the can. Whew. He's on his way out today. No big deal. Just get Move that can of death away. Let's clean his enclosure, get it nice and beautiful again. He pooped all over the place. I'll see you guys in a split. <gasps> all right, so we got this enclosure, nice and clean, fresh water. Everything the mamba needs. Let's just get him out of this little horn receptacle. Oh, right there at the mouth of his mouth open. What's up, dude? You're so cranky. Black interior of the mouth. That's how they got the name black mamba. But there is actually a species of, uh, or subspecies. Sorry, not a subspecies. There's a locality of mamba. And I forgot what country it was, but it actually is all black. So the scales are black. And maybe one day we can try to get our hands on one of them. That'd be really cool but mainly they're called black mambas because of that black interior of the mouth they flash when they're threatened. Come on, dude. We really clean, relax. There you go. Beautiful black mamba. He's thick, like I'm holding his coil in my hand. He's become a big, beautiful snake. There we go, nice and easy. He's gonna need an upgrade too. I wanna get him into the largest arboreal vision cage that they make, so hopefully we can grab a couple of cages like that in the future. Maybe get a deal or something. There we go, put a lock on that, make sure it's nice and secure. Good to go. Now let's go see Kevin the King Cobra. Um, I'm just gonna do a little spot cleaning in his enclosure. I'm just gonna do a little spot cleaning in Kevin's enclosure. Nice and easy. Try to get the can in there. Just make sure it's nice and clean for him. I'm gonna leave this door wide open so we can get out if we have to. Oh, hey buddy, you're right there. How's it going? Shit. <laughs> hey, buddy. You just came to clean the poop you put everywhere. Oh, hey. Hey, big boy. Don't mind me, just cleaning. Obviously, big king cobra, very dangerous. You don't want to get this close to a snake like this. I just know this individual for a long time, so I can get away with certain things like this. He's a beast of a king cobra. Look at him. I'm just gonna clean his poop out a little bit. Do a little bit of spot cleaning, make it easier on the isopods because they can only eat so much poop. There we go. And for those of you guys who are new to the channel, the isopods are basically roly poly bugs that eat poop and fungus and whatnot. There we go. Get some more poop. Just a little spot cleaning so it's not super nasty in here. And then anything else will get eaten up by the bugs. Ah, big spicy meatball, crusty like concrete. <sighs> Whew. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Beautiful King Cabra, look at him. How awesome is that? All right, beautiful people, I will see you on the next one. Woo! Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, stick to what you guys love in life. I love working with reptiles. I love traveling the world looking for them. We're gonna see more of that in 2024. Happy New Year's, guys. Love you. Where are you? Whoa! Oh my god, drop scan!